Welcome to National Geographic Episode 4. All of these photos are taken on Hollis Crossing property. Hollis Crossing is a condominium and townhouse uh, complex on the west side of Nashville, New Hampshire. I think a lot of these photos are very unusual. For example, there is a total 180 degree rainbow and then you're seeing beautiful skies and you're seeing the river, trees along the river, as well as beautiful autumn foliage. This is New England. These are photos I've taken while well, just out on my morning or daily walk. There's a red-tailed hawk soaring over the property. There's an osprey. Here is a great blue heron on a tree about two-tenths of a mile away. And here we see a, a bald eagle that's uh, just kind of uh, passing through. There were actually two of them there that day. But we're um, enjoying seeing them. And there is an osprey just about ready to take off. Here is a uh, raptor of some kind. It's too far away to positively identify. There is a Cooper's Hawk sitting on the light standard right over the pool. Then there are a pair of uh, ospreys. And here is a great horned owl. Then there is, actually I thought there was only one hare in there when I took the photo, but I found out there are two. Now here is a pair of mute swans on the river on a very foggy morning. Here we're very fortunate to see the great egret. There's a great blue heron in the backwater right off our deck. A mother mallard with a bunch of ducklings. And here we see a winter scene. The following scene is interesting and it's an ice formation on grass or twigs or branches and the river receded and left the, the formation just hanging there. Now we had some bittersweet, there's a virgin spower. And here are a pair of swans on the river where they actually wintered here in the winter of 2011 and 2012. Where we have a Canada goose here and a family of them, four goslings and the adults. This is a, uh, an unusual scene because these are hooded mergansers and they're usually just passing through while migrating. Beavers on the property evidenced by the work they've done. There's hoarfrost on a branch which makes an interesting photo. These are dandelions. Closed gentians, a bee on goldenrod, and simply another view of that bee. Now the following scene is a, an insect with the antenna exactly the same color as a flower in which it's sitting. I thought that was a little bit unique. There's a honeybee. And there's a closed wing red spotted purple admiral butterfly. There is a the New Hampshire state flower, the lilac. And then there is, we see in the spring a lot of these patches of bluets. Bluets can be blue or white. Here is an Indian pipe or sometime known as a corpse flower. It has no chlorophyll, it thrives on a fungus. Jack in the pulpit. We don't see a lot of those here, but we do see them and the brown-eyed Susan, which is sometimes, I believe, called a cone flower. This is catkins on a maple tree, lady slippers, moccasin flower. This could be a shin leaf plant, a spring flower. And by the river we see the yellow iris, and there is a close-up of one of the iris. Now we're coming to a, uh, the catkins on an American chestnut tree, which are going to try to control the pollination, pollination to improve its health. And then this we have a dandelion, and this is a little wildflower plot by the ball field that has fame flowers, uh, dandelions, probably mouse ear dandelions, and bluets. Then there's a bellwort. I believe that's a bellwort. And next is the Purple loosestrife, which they say is invasive, but invasive weed is in the eye of the beholder. 
I think. The Red, the red Admiral butterfly and a swallowtail butterfly on lilacs. And the open wing red spotted purple admiral. Nice blue. There's a beautiful cloud formation that we see right off of our deck over the wetlands. Here's a milkweed that the monarch butterfly relies on. It's an exploded one. Here is a hornet's nest in the linden tree. There is uh, formations on the ground by the autumn leaves. There's an oxeye daisy. Here is a fruit of a flowering crab tree. And wild grapes. We have quite a few wild grapes some years. And the fruit or the chestnuts on the American chestnut tree. Here are two catbirds sitting in a tree right next to us. And then we see the formation on the maple trees early spring. And of course we have the double crested cormorant on a stump in the river. Here's another view of the same bird. And we have a lot of mushrooms, fungi on the property. And they are uh, such a great variety pretty colors. This was a fairy ring. It was almost perfect. I went back to get my camera. In the meantime, somebody had kicked it around a little bit. Very large mushroom. And another one. Here is growth, mushroom growth on a tree that's going back to the soil. Now, I think it's a fibrous mushroom right there. Big one. More beautiful colors. This mushroom looks like a cross-section of a tree, but it's actually a mushroom. And these beautiful colors with a little princess pine nestled in there. And here is a mushroom that looked like it was made by Dunkin' Donuts. And here we find the American toad. For years I tried to find out what made this beautiful sound. That is a spring peeper. I finally got a chance to see one and photograph it. Now there's a green frog. Mm -hmm. Now we have a pair of wood ducks. Probably one of the most flamboyant, beautiful drakes of all the waterfowl. There you can see them again and you can confirm that. This is, is a turf war coming up here. There was a tufted titmouse in the knot hole right off the, our back deck. There's a red a uh, bellied woodpecker wants to lay claim to it. A chipmunk has lodged himself in it. And even the Carolina wren in the winter said, hey, I want that spot. I don't know who's going to win that. But here is the pileated woodpecker right on the tree right off my deck. There he was on another tree. There's a flicker. And this nice little bird, the black-capped chickadee, how they survive in cold weather beats me. Here are the house finches. They're very, really pretty. There's a slick colored junco. And more finches. Those were actually goldfinches with their winter garb. There's a house finch and a goldfinch in the summer garb. They nest very late in the summer when they can use thistle down for their lining their nest. The orioles come and eat the um, Orange halves, they come right up on our deck, and they're right overhead. There's a beauty right there. There's a saucy little bird with his tail, very proud. I think it's a thrush. I'm not quite sure. I couldn't get a good enough view of it. Everybody knows what this bird is. It's the rose-breasted grosbeak. It's un unbelievably beautiful. And here again, nice cardinals. We have quite a few of them. Here is a kingbird, an eastern kingbird, a little white tip on the end of its tail, probably the only small songbird with a white tip. That was a catbird. These are belted kingfishers. The female is more colorful than the male, which is unusual. This is not a Monet painting. This is river reflections, water lilies on the Nashua River. The Nashua River is actually one of the best bass fishing pieces of water in the southern New Hampshire. There is a painted turtle and a mute swan coming right up to the deck saying, hey, what's happening? A crow is sneaking in to grab some suet. 
and a song sparrow singing its heart out. Now we have the ruby-throated hummingbird perched, and here he is, or she is drinking from a verbena. There is the male again. And high in the tree is the cardinal singing beautifully. And the hairy woodpecker. Tree swallows peeking out of the nest of the or the hole of the nesting box. There's another one, and one on top of the pole and one out looking out the hole. Here are two bluebirds, a mother and a father, each looking at which nesting box should we choose. There were seven bluebirds in the winter, which was surprising. There's another fascinating little bluebird. Everybody loves the blue, eastern bluebirds. Here's one either entering or exiting the nesting box. And here's what they've accomplished. Four pretty blue eggs, much like robin eggs, but smaller. There's a white-breasted nuthatch. They'll eat sunflower seeds with the best of them. There's a red-winged blackbird sitting on a cattail, which you would expect. Here is a drake mallard. Pretty, but very common. Here is the drake hooded merganser. And the common merganser, the male has a black head, the female has a buff or brownish head. There's a red fox. And deer, doe with its fawn. Beavers, we see a lot of beavers in the river. And here are three fawns on the trail. Here are two deer as seen from our deck. There was a big doe waiting for me on the ball field one morning. Here are spider webs. You see these flat all over the fields in the morning with the dew. It really makes an interesting pattern. There's the trail, the river trail. And here we come to those beautiful sky some mornings or evenings. There is that 180 degree rainbow. We feel we're kind of the pot of gold at the end of that rainbow. So that's the end that all these photos are taken on Hollis Crossing property. And credits go to Avard Productions and Gate City Chronicles.